Hey Church, welcome to a very special Good Friday Church Online. Uh, we celebrate today the central point in history for our Christian faith. Uh, on Sunday we get to remember that Jesus rose from the dead, but today uh, it's Good Friday and we remember that He died on the cross for us. He paid for our sin. So thank you for joining us. Uh, my name's Jason. I'm one of the pastors at LifePoint. This is my daughter, Bella. Hi. Uh, and we have a few things happening for the adults this morning, but first we want to start with something exciting for our kids. So let's check it out. This is the Easter story of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Surely um, the two guards took him, Jesus to um, the party and Jesus dying on the cross. Dun, 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 dun. God took the Jesus to the Pilate, and Pilate said, What should I do with him? Kill him! Moo, moo! Kill him! And then, um, he said, But what did, what did he do wrong? Nothing, just kill him, please. Okay, if you want to, I'll wash my hands. With Jesus' blood. Wash, 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 wash. Jesus dying. I fell over. But then he fell over. Jesus fell over. And then he came and then he came. And somebody else came and carried the cross for Jesus. It was Simon. Jesus. And then, and then he carried Jesus Put him under the cross. Wait, what's the guy? Okay, got it. The guard nail, 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 nail. And then it was all dark. They put a sign on the cross that said King of the Jews. Only one guard stayed. And the guard said, truly this was the Son of God. And Jesus said, it is finished. And then he died. Suddenly, the curtain in the temple was torn into two. And now everybody can be with God. Now we whip it up. The curtain is ripped. Everybody can be with God. I love God. After Jesus died, the guards took G put Jesus' body in the tomb and wrapped him up with some white paper. And then they pushed the giant boulder in the way so nobody got in. Awesome. Bella now has a reading for us uh, from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. Thanks, Bell. One of the criminals, criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly for... We are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Great job. Thanks, Bill. Let's pray, hey? Thank you, Jesus, that you are in paradise that you are waiting there for us, you are preparing a place for us. Um, but today we remember that it cost you so much. We remember that we are set free, we are restored, we are redeemed, we are destined for paradise because you gave it all. So today we celebrate, uh, we remember, and yeah, we thank you. We worship you now. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing now. We're going to respond in worship to our God. Uh, you can dance in your living room if you'd like. You can stand and sing. You can sit and reflect. Uh, but let's worship uh, our God, hey?
Powerful stuff, hey. He arose. I love Good Friday. I need Good Friday just to help me be reminded of how powerful and how extravagant the love of God is. Usually, it's one of my favorite services of the entire year. We get to go outside as a church down at North Pine Dam, and we couldn't do that this year, unfortunately. So I decided, even though you're stuck at home, I want to come outdoors and into, into God's glorious creation for Good Friday. Got a bit of a message for you. Uh, it's from Luke 23, the passage that Bella read out before. Great job, Bella. That was fantastic. Let's give her a round of applause. Good. We have, a, we have a, a bit of a game we play at our house sometimes called Opposite Day. It's silly. The kids love it. It's kind of like, hey, kids, time to go to sleep. And they know that it's time to wake up. I say, hey, kids, no eating your food. And they know it's time for lunch. Or, hey, kids, I'm loving that annoying noise you're making. Keep doing it. And they know, be quiet. It's a silly game, but it, it kind of, in some ways, encapsulates Jesus' ministry. Like his whole life, he was here. He was doing the opposite of what people would expect him to do. He was a king who came and he hung out with the wrong people. He offered forgiveness and love and peace and mercy to the wrong type of people, the people that really didn't deserve it at all. When it came to the people he was warning and people he was saying, hey, stop that, he was talking to the wrong people with them, he was talking to the religious, seemingly good people. And then we get to Good Friday, and as we know, it's, it's the ultimate opposite day. Here is, he's a king, but instead of being on a throne, he's on a cross. It says king of the Jews above his throne, except he's being crucified, executed like a criminal. His royal cupbearer is a Roman guard with a sponge full of sour wine for poor people on a stick he's shoving in his face. His royal retinue, his royal family on either side, instead of two people on a throne next to him on his right and left, it's two criminals hanging out, dying with him. It's opposite day. It's not what you'd expect a Messiah, a king, to be doing. And we get this little drama in Luke 23. Actually, on the cross, as they're dying, dramatically, there's actually like a, a scene happening between these three people that are dying. You've got one bloke who calls out kind of jeeringly, hey, saviour, you should be able to save yourself. And, you know, it sounds rude, but it really might be... I kind of get it. That mean, probably would be what you would say to someone who went around calling themselves a saviour and then ends up not even be able to like end up being crucified, being murdered. You're like, mate, just so you know, this whole saviour, the whole messiah, king thing, just so you know, Jesus, he's trying to say, it hasn't worked out, mate. You haven't been able to do it. And he mocks him. He kind of picks up on this idea, save yourself, that actually a lot of us believe. He's kind of keying into this idea that actually people think all the time that we actually do need to be people that save ourselves. There's this idea in our world of, of karma. But in the end, it's up to you. In the end, your life, you might not use the word karma, but a lot of people believe this even if they don't use the word karma. In the end, your life is up to you. Sort yourself out. Make sure you've got your retirement savings. Make sure you're working hard. Make sure you're disciplined. Make sure you're on a diet. Make sure your kids are raised well. Make sure your house looks good. Make sure you look good. In the end, make sure your life goes well. It is completely up to you. And honestly, I kind of resonate with that. I, I think it's a good idea to work hard. I think it's a good idea to take responsibility for your life. But then we get to something like this season we're in right now, this cultural moment of the coronavirus and people left, right and center are losing their jobs. And it doesn't seem like it's the poor people's fault or even the you know greedy billionaires' fault. The people that we can usually blame, it doesn't seem like we can. It just kind of happens. And it's not because they haven't worked hard. It's just people that have businesses. I was talking to a, a cafe owner who's going to have to give it up and might never recover from this, going, well, it's not his fault. And we get to a scenario like this and we realize maybe we're not as powerful or as in control or as able to save ourselves as we thought. 
Maybe actually there are factors that I just we, we, we don't have any control over. And the things, the two things that are in our culture usually are the things that save us are our finances, our financial security. And for many people, we're not secure as like we used to be. And the second thing is our freedom, our individual ability to make our lives good, to go out, to do things, to be in control, to go to parties, to go on a holiday. And these things are kind of not around at the moment. Maybe we need to be people that go, hey, I don't know if we can save ourselves. And Good Friday helps us see that because there's this other guy on the cross, the other criminal on the other cross. And he says something different. He says, have you no respect? He says, don't you fear God? We are getting punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. He admits he's a failure. He sits there on the cross and he says, look, if saving myself was the goal of life, it's pretty darn obvious I've stuffed it up. (laughs) Here I am. Like you can see why he could admit that. Like I haven't been able to do it. I haven't been able to save myself. And then it's really interesting. He looks at this dying man next to him, Jesus Christ. And he doesn't doesn't have his theology worked out, I don't reckon. Between you and me, I don't think in some ways he knows what's going on. But he somehow sees in Jesus, he really was the king. You know, instead of declaring, Jesus, instead of declaring, you know, judgment and saying, oh, you're going to rue the day you've done this to me. He cries out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And somehow he says, this is actually the king I've been waiting for. And he says, I don't know how this is working, Jesus, but as he dies there, he says, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? Because I can see somehow, even though you're dying, your kingdom is coming. It's not a noble request. It's not a selfless request. It's not a commitment to follow Jesus to the end of days. It's not counting up the cost. It's actually none of those things. It's just him saying simply, I can't do it. I need saving and you're the one. You're the king I've been looking for. This guy's a criminal. Like he's, he's not a good example of what your kids should be like, okay? He's the kind of guy, like he's obviously stuffed up his whole life. If he's walking down the road on one side, you go, hey kids, let's, let's cross the road. <laughs> like, let's not be around this guy, all right? He's not a noble character in the Bible, and yet he gets something right. He says, I need saving. I can't do it myself. I need Jesus. And Jesus' reply to him, as we heard when Bella read this out, it's either completely insane, like a... <laughs> A dying man says, truly I tell you, which is Jesus' way of saying like, this is legit, listen up. What I'm going to say next is the truth. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. A dying man says that. Like that's either insane or it's exactly what you would expect a king on his coronation march to say. He issues a royal pardon truly i tell you you've made it you've made it because i'm making it on your behalf i remember as a kid i used to hear this story about the thief on the cross and i'll admit i was you know a good kid raised in a christian house and i used to think really surely that's unfair like surely it can't be that easy surely he had to do something to prove himself He couldn't even get down on his knees or anything. Like, surely that's just, it's not as easy as that to be saved. And then you get to Good Friday and you see it is. That's the ridiculous, extravagant grace of God. You see Good Friday, you see Jesus nailed to a cross. You see what it cost. And it makes me go, you know what? I actually can't add anything to that. It's not that plus a little bit of good stuff that I'm doing. That is it. Jesus came and they said to Jesus on the cross, save yourself. 
And little did they know that was the one thing he was never going to do. Jesus did not come to save himself. He came to give himself. He came to save everybody else but himself. We all know we need justice. You know that. You know in the end, when someone does something wrong to you, you want justice. And you know that you should receive justice for the things that you've done too. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Maybe you're listening along today and you've never actually said that to Jesus. You've never got to that point where you've said, you know what, I can't do it. I can't save myself. I can't make it. I can't prove myself. And you've never looked at Jesus and said, would you save me? You're the king. I need you. I actually want to give you an opportunity right now as you watch this video, wherever you are, to say that to Jesus. If you think he's there with you, drawing you close, to say, hey, come with me. I want to save you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Jesus, I need you. I can't do it. I can't save myself. I'm sorry for trying. And I'm sorry when I didn't try. Would you forgive me? Would you save me? Would you remember me? And would you be my king? Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, maybe for the very first time, we'd love to hear from you. If you go to lifepoint.org.au slash connect, just go and fill out that form and we'd actually just love to connect with you to take a next step on your journey of faith. That'd be awesome. Hey, before that this thief on the cross said, remember me, actually Jesus said the same thing the night before. He was there with his best friends and he was having the Passover meal and he kind of re instituted a new Passover, a new communion. We call it the Lord's Supper or communion. And he took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. And he took the wine and he said, this is my blood poured out for you. Do this and remember me. So as a church, we're going to do this right now. You might be doing it there alone in your home, doing it there with, with your family. And we'd actually love to encourage you right now after this is finished, to go and log on with your tiny church family and have communion together. Let's do it. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you Easter Sunday to celebrate the greatest day in history, that we have been redeemed, that nothing but the blood of Jesus has washed us clean, and we are made whole, and Jesus is alive.